Cubic Corporation is a uh, billion dollar niche business. We just eclipsed a billion dollars this year. We have principally three pieces of business. The first piece is involved in uh, fair collection business for major rail systems around the world, Washington, New York, Hong Kong, Sydney, Singapore, London. We also have a piece of the business that uh, is a defense services business. This business uh, is instrumental in training our troops around the world as well as providing logistical support. And the business that I oversee, which is roughly a third of Cubic's portfolio, is defense systems and products. We're principally known for three things. The first thing, uh, two, are related to training. The first one was post-Vietnam, we invented the Top Gun system, and we've been instrumenting fighter pilots, their airplanes, for many, many years. We've deployed those systems in 45 countries. In the late 80s, we took that same technology and we moved into the, into the Army. Uh, we uh, did instrumentation for the combat training centers, got into the miles business, and have deployed those kind of systems for 45 countries. In addition to that, we're a niche supplier of communications equipment. We provided the data link on the Joint Stars program, the Aster program. We're involved in the UAV world, and we, we pick niche spots. Well, um, in the defense applications business, we're involved of training the force for the U.S. and its allies. And unfortunately, our world is in harm's way. And so training continues. People need to be better trained. And our training actually has become more mission rehearsal. So we, we have some growth in our business there. The other portion of, of our business is involved in intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance. And that's a very big ticket item. So the fact that we build things, um, we don't have as much risk, uh, small business, et cetera, et cetera, and our business will continue to grow. A lot of our clients in the U.S. want off-the-shelf products, quote unquote. Uh, often the requirements don't match this other desire. So the, the challenge is to provide the very best uh, maintain margins, uh, not spending a lot of money on research and de development. Normally we shared that with our clients and today there seems to be less of an appetite to do that. Fortunately, we have a huge geographic footprint being in 45 countries and we try to leverage all of those investments from these various nations to ensure we're providing the very best. So in, in a strange sense, the non-recurring that we'll do overseas is applied here in the U.S. Stopped, um, I think we can mitigate, I think we can slow, but if something is connected electronically, it's a timing question. So I think we can slow people down, I think we can anticipate, but the enemy continues to adapt, and so it's a very difficult issue. I, I think that uh, as we continue to be in harm's way, there will be pressure on the procurement and R&D accounts. And so I think there will be uh, slight decreases, not major decreases, but slight decreases affecting the defense industry. We have very good core business. Um, we could argue that uh, since we have such large market share in our business that uh, we need to get into other businesses. So we're, if you will, betting on getting into other growth businesses. We're looking at uh, cyber business. We have some interesting devices in the tactical environment for situational awareness and combat ID. And so it, it, it is critical that we move those things over the line to have other businesses to shore up our main business.